Welcome to episode 167 of Star Wars and Scotch. It's Tim, it's Kevin. We're here. Hey. We're talking Bad Batch today, but we also have a little bit more to talk about today. Star Wars Outlaws trailer dropped yesterday for the story, and there's lots to talk about there. Tim and I are also uh, on our way to a secret mission into uncharted space. So this will be a faster episode, but we're going to cover Bad Batch and cover Outlaws. We're just not going to lollygag. So, Tim, I'm not going to ask you how your week was. I'm going to assume it was good. Then you won't ask me how my week was. We'll just assume it was good, and Solid. we'll get right into King's Coast Coffee. Perfect. Yeah, I even, I even put it in a special Darth Vader cup today. So, uh, yeah, Aztec roast for all. Those are you that are drinking wondering. it on the dark side too? Yes, I am. Always beautiful, beautiful. Uh, so, KingsCoastCoffee.com. Make sure you head over so you can shake up the way you wake up and uh, check out the uh, that that spring surge there. I hear it's uh, I hear it's delicious. I may or may not surgy. be drinking it right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> kingsgoescoffee.com uh if you didn't get your uh heck delvers do merch from lab 77 you should probably head over there now it's heck delvers do uh <laughs> ah, de. i get it should ah. we say fole a do because uh, the new joker trailers out oh God. Uh, joker and la la land don't start me we don't have time for that um um but things that you should do you should head over to gcxevent.com and get your tickets now uh yep. we, we got we only have so much time until august 16th and the 17th that are at the rosen jingle creek resort in orlando florida uh we also have our charity marathon we've got some other crazy stuff that we we got to look at yesterday for announcements that will be happening at a at very soon in the very near future uh, got a lot of exciting things for GCX, so stay tuned to the GCX socials, whether you're well, you know, paying attention on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Follow us over at GCX Event, GCX Everywhere, GCXEvent.com. Get your tickets, get your hotel rooms. They're selling out fast. Yeah, we're selling, over 50% selling sold. Over 50% sold so far, and I don't want to hear you complaining the night before that. I can't get a hotel room. That's not our fault, okay? That's not our fault. So head on over to GCXEvent.com. To learn more, I had somebody in chat yesterday say, "Like, oh my God, I live in Orlando, and I had no idea that GCX was even a thing." So there it Tell is. More friends. people are learning about GCX every day, uh, which is really cool. It's really neat. Uh, so yeah, don't miss out. Check it out, GCX.com. Yeah. All right, let's dive into it. Let's talk about Bad Batch first. Yeah, let's get um, that out of the way. Wasn't really a nice filler episode. Fill it wasn't a filler episode because it was advancing the plot, and that's <laughs> yeah, your definition of not filler. I know, I, I know. Will it was, say it was it is short. The, it is the precursor to. Uh, the, it was necessary to go do this. I thought I figured Amber Rampart would have been put to death, but apparently he's in one of the labor camps. I thought it was kind of funny that he came back. Uh, I thought that was great, and then he was him, him arguing with the uh, the uh, Ugnot. Uh, Ugnot. I was like, that was like Ignot, and I'm like, that's the wrong word. Uh, that, that was really funny. Kind of had reminded me a little bit of uh, of Mando, but I mean, this was like an epilogue. You know, like this was like the like the the opening, kind of setting the scene. Yeah. Uh, you know, getting us ready for the finale. You know, we we find out that you know Tantus, like nobody knows where Tantus is. We were kind of wrong about the about the tracker. I really thought that Omega had another tracker on her, but I guess we were wrong with that one. Um, mm -hmm. So they had to go get Rampart to figure out where Tantus is. He has no idea. Well, he kind of knows where Tantus is, but doesn't really know where Tantus it's is. It's more fun this way anyway. I really wanted to watch him get tortured. I was really hoping that Crosshair was going to waterboard him or something when he was like, <laughs> I'm, only gonna, I'm only going to give you what you want if you tell me what I want. You know, that kind of crap. I hate that. I wish he would have just beat the crap out of him to, you know, for him to say something. But here we are. He's like, you would have killed me if you wanted to already. Tempting. But. <laughs> Uh, so, um, yeah, it, it, I, I, I'm going to say it. I really want live action Wanda Sykes as V. Yeah, I think sure. she would be so much fun. I love her as a comedian. So, yeah, um, I don't yeah, think she I would think look, I so think she, but Wanda is getting kind of old. So I don't, she is, she I don't is. know I'll how that, that would work. She's, she's up there. I mean, she was old when I was a kid. So now she's like older, but just the attitude and everything. Oh, like she's great. Anything for brown eyes. She's still in love with him, and he's gone. I know. Uh, That's why I think that you're right about him being the mercenary. I, I really think he is a shadow trooper. Yeah, we had a few people comment yes or no on that over the week on some of the social Good. media. I'm glad you guys are listening. Proud yeah, of you guys. Yeah. So uh, uh, that was cool. But, um, yeah, overall, uh, the biggest part was the ending with uh, with – Hemlock basically discussing how this process works and why they keep failing mm -hmm. and that they see it was a decreased M count or was it just degradation? It was degradation. 
Yeah. Okay. So, um, which continues to play into the whole project necromancer where we are, we, we know that the emperor's clones were, you know, look at uh, Snoke, for example, he degraded, mm -hmm. he, his shell couldn't withstand all of the cosmic dark side energy or whatever we're going to call that. So I really hope that at some point we get a good breakdown of how that all works. And we're slowly getting it piecemealed out to us with this, which is really interesting. And uh, I'm excited to see where they take this. Emery is definitely having an oh. internal struggle with all of this big mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I was really hoping she wasn't going to be so still pro imperial uh, mm -hmm. when Omega met up with her. But I think it's going to I think by the end, Emery will be on their side or she'll die or she'll do say, some type dead. of like sacrifice. You know, she's like she understands that Omega is, you know, more important than anything else. So she like gives herself up. I don't know. But so, some, I think Emery is going to play a, a big role at some point soon. The way Hemlock treats Omega is so interesting to me because he's very straightforward and to the point, but he's also very nice to her, if that makes sense. Yeah. A at least verbally. Um, yeah. The way he was, she was like, where's Nala Satan? He's like, she's in a cell. She won't be able to help you escape this time. Mm -hmm. But then he also like, I don't know if it's a villain complex or something, but he tells her everything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, every good villain tells the idea, he tells their plan before it, it goes into effect. Of course. It's just interesting that like he's not telling the other kids in the vault. He just yeah, told her because they're all they're all numbers. They're, they don't have they don't have real names. They're not important. So I don't know the way Hemlock's treating her is very interesting to me. Now she's going to live in the vault with the other kids. And I guess they're just going to play with their blood back and forth. And I guess so. But I think she's going to do the whole and or thing and she's going to create a, uh, a rebellion. They're going to revolt. Yeah, because all the kids can use the force. So force that's sensitive. Uh huh. I think, I think Omega is a little, I think, you know, when we at the beginning of, of Bad Batch are like, I think she might be force sensitive. I think that might happen. Well, we see a trend in a lot of the new Star Wars media of people figuring out how they can use the force. We saw it in Ahsoka with um, Sabine, regardless uh -huh. of whether, how you feel about that. It happened. Hate it. Uh, and I'm one of the people and Tim's one of the people that did not like it, but it happened. It happened. It is uh, what it is. It's we safe. saw it with Obi-Wan reconnecting with the force in his show. Mm-hmm. So it seems to be a theme of people, you know, tapping into it in a time of great need. Um, so we'll see where they go with that. But it could be that's how Omega realizes that she can uh, use the force. Do we get two episodes next week? No, we're one one episode a week from here on out. Got it. Um, so uh, but we're officially in the end game starting next week. It's the final four episodes. Yep. So. uh if we go back to what Dave did with Clone Wars, that was its own movie. Yes. So I, I'm not expecting that, but it wouldn't shock me if he goes hard in the paint for the final four episodes with like half an hour each Great. to make a two hour linear story that you can go back and watch separate from the show if you wanted to. Um, so obviously we're going to figure out where Tantus is. I want to know who Rampart or not who, but how what his way around it is. Like to finding finding Tantus? Yeah, he's he, yeah. is he stringing them along? He obviously they obviously have to find it, but how? Uh, he got burned by the Empire. I don't think he, I don't think he cares anymore. I think he's just going to be kind of a self serving like anti hero. Not even anti hero. That's the wrong word to use. I think he's just going to be a self serving just asshole. Or maybe Crosshair will get what he wants in the end. Oh, after that'd be awesome! Thinking. Yeah, I would love that. Just push him off a cliff. To see the trauma, too, with Crosshair shaking when he was saying, I didn't want to go back. Yeah, which was totally understandable. I mean, he was really hoping that other people would step up. I mean, we still don't know what happened with <clears throat> with Rex. You know, we still haven't seen Rex or uh, uh, Echo. So Yeah, they, last time we saw them was on that base, mm -hmm. I believe. Was that the last time we saw them? And the when comms the have been jammed. Made. They haven't been able to, to contact them because of uh, uh, Pabu's still under... Uh, Imperial occupation at the, at the moment. It really I, sucked to see like our favorite Star Wars vacation resort with a Imperial starship in the sky. I was like, Ugh, yeah. Why do they have to ruin everything? Mm -hmm. They should have just built Pabu where the Star Cruiser is and let people just. That's your Star Wars vacation beach situation. Yeah, I'd go there. I'd vacation on Pabu. See, hundred percent. Guarantee you, a lot of people would. Uh, but yeah, so. Overall, getting us from point A to point B, learned a few pieces of information that are relevant to where we need to take the story. Uh, definitely seeing the the bow start to get tied on this series of uh, 
wrapping things up um, and hoping that would, let me ask you this, since you mentioned Snoke, do you think we will see one of the deformed clones before so. the end of the show? I hope so. We, we, we need a nod to something to like make sense of the whole cloning operation or what happens to uh, Hemlock's research. It'd also be fun to have a thread that just connects this to the, the, the sequels. Yeah, or even Mandalorian or something. You know, we, mm-hmm. we definitely need we need a, a string to be connected uh, or it's just I don't think it's really going to make all I mean, like we understand. I think like if you if you really pay attention, you'd get it. But I think we need like one big like, oh, moment. Yeah. And I, I'm pretty sure there's one or two of those left in the show. Yeah. Uh, but I have a feeling we won't see them till the last two episodes. I think the table is still going to be set in the next two. But I also feel like we're off to the races now. Uh, and, and it did pick up this week. It wasn't boring. The action was fun. Uh, stealing the Imperial transport, which also was a nod to Mandalorian because that was the uh, the entire episode with Bill Burr's character. Yes, yeah, that was really fun though. That entire not like, the race same across the bridge was good. I verified it's not the same planet; no. it's a different planet. That yep. one was more tropical. This one yep. was more barren. Yep, but definitely um, shared this. Like there are similarities there for sure. Well, it's just a nod to that's how they run their mining facilities. They use mm-hmm. prison labor. Um, they use these big transports, same type of bridges, facilities. I loved how lazy that Imperial officer was until everything started going wrong. He had yep. his feet up reading a book, and then he uh-huh. was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, of course. It, what do it, you it, mean it, there's a problem? That's, it, it goes back to Andor. You know, they're fat and happy, and they just feel like they're that no one can touch them. Oh, they got touched. Yep, they got touched. Yep. Um, all right, well, that's it for Bad Batch. We'll be right back in one minute. And we are back. We, uh, we're going to talk about Tales of the Empire. The trailer dropped. I think right after we were. It was Thursday. It was the day after, per day usual. After. Yeah, per usual, we got more Star Wars content after we did Star Wars and Scotch. So. But this week, we got Outlaws before, so we'll talk about yeah. that, too. Yeah, for sure. But Tales of the Empire, yep. so we thought we would get Tales of the Jedi Season 2. We got Tales of the Empire instead, which I is... I love how they cut the logo out, and then Empire comes out. It was so uh-huh. Good. That was really good. And it's it's um it says it's six shorts two stories so it's the story of barris Offy, who we know yep. from clone wars yep morgan elizabeth who we know from mandalorian i'm assuming they're three episodes each or maybe they're just telling the stories together they might they might be interwoven yeah for um, sure but i, I but, love that i love that barris is coming back because we had no idea what happened to her after clone wars uh we all had the assumptions that we'd see her again in ahsoka uh, because those two, uh, you know, they, they there was like two or three episodes in Clone Wars where they were like together going through things, and she ends up screwing Ahsoka, and like it was really dark and bad, and so it, it would have made sense for her to show back up in Ahsoka, but now we get to actually see what happens, and it looks like she she does actually become an Inquisitor. Uh, it looks like she becomes the apprentice. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like she becomes the apprentice to the grand the, the Grand Inquisitor. I don't know if she's an apprentice or she's just being. She's definitely by learning him. underneath him. One hundred percent. Whereas, like the other ones, they kind of just like. There's been a, been a few things when it comes to like the Inquisitors with Vader and whatnot, um, like their torture and everything. But we've never really seen like their training I, mm-hmm. th- that I can remember. I know like the, in comics, they, there's some really gruesome stuff that they they do to the Inquisitors to keep them like on the dark side. Um, and the punishments learned, they go through. The rise of the red blade gave away a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the stuff that she had to go through. Yep. Um, we see the Inquisitor from the Tales of the Jedi. Yes. And so short in this. The one too. that has the the weird. He almost he almost looks Bird like uh, he looks like the uh, the guy from Overwatch. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, what's his face with the die 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 uh, Reaper? Yeah, Reaper. He looks a lot like Reaper to me. So like it'll be cool to see like more of him like we or them they we know that they die to ahsoka at the end of tales of the jedi mm-hmm. on her on her bit so that's cool to see that we get to see other inquisitors well it's awesome to see the grand inquisitor again i love him he's a great bad guy i think he got kind of like shit on the way he died like it kind of sucks that he kind of just got like kicked over the edge and died like emperor style um mm-hmm. so like overall like i'm pretty pumped for this but what i'm really excited for is to see to learn more about morgan like morgan shows up in a in in Mando with Ahsoka, we learn that she is with like she knows Thrawn, but we never like understood the real relationship that they had there. We knew that she created ships. She was a part of like the creation of certain war pieces for the Empire and for Thrawn, but we didn't really know much. So now we get to see her life on Dathomir. We know that she's a Night Sister. Um, but the one thing that I thought was really strange was that in this trailer, we see her use like the same powers that she had when the, the grandmother or the, the high mother from, uh, the other galaxy, when she gave mm-hmm. her the, the sword of Towson, 
mm-hmm. when she in like she she gets like the black eyes and like all of like the crazy like green flame power. But then she does that again with her like these hook looking sword things that she's using the commas commas size. I don't know. I don't know she's doing something. Um, but anyways, so she like they get like light on fire and she's fighting Grievous. And we know that she's there for the genocide of Dathomir. So we she's gonna see her sisters die. Um, which is also which also means if you read the uh, what was the book for for Ventress? Uh, if you read that book, you know that Ventress was also there on Dathomir during the mm-hmm. genocide. So those two being in the same spot at the same time is definitely a possibility. So yeah, I would love she's to see Ventress show Grievous, up. Which yeah, she's wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's gonna be really neat to see. So yeah, I I'm interested in both stories. I love Thrawn when she basically makes the offer and he's like, offer it, accept it, and just turns and walks away from her. I was like, that is the most Thrawn thing that he could do. Very much so. Um, uh, cool. We made a deal. Goodbye. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but Barris' story intrigues the hell out of me. Because you know me. I'm, I lean more towards the mystical fantasy side yeah, of Star of course. Wars. So to get a peek behind the Inquisitor curtain, I think is going to be I that last part where they were like, and now for your final test, mm-hmm. and he just throws the lightsaber in there, and then it's the dome, and then it's just the two people like, good luck. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> two men enter, one man leave. Very, like, very, that's jo- what it felt very like. Joker-esque. Thunderdome. Where? I, I keep going. Expansion. Oh. Aggressive expansion. There you go, that one. It's um, only room for one more. So we're having try. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> overall, I'm very excited. I think seeing the re- I hopefully we get more insight into the Morgan Thrawn relationship and the agreements that they've made. Maybe we get kind of like an understanding of why he's going back to Dathomir with the sarcophaguses, sarcophagi. Um, always got that one wrong. Uh, so maybe we'll get a little bit more intro to that and see what's going on there. And then I don't know if like, will this be the end of Barris? Will this be the, be the beginning for her? Will we get to see more of her? I don't know. Maybe, maybe she'll show up again in uh, uh Jedi. Maybe she'll be Jack. in the third Jedi. <clears throat> I didn't do my research. So I, I need your help on this one. And I'm asking for help. This is not a told you so gotcha moment. This is me asking, are there inquisitors that we don't know their identity that could potentially be Barris that we've seen in other forms of content. So oh, if you know the answer to that question, question. Uh, or a theory is fine. Comment on YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, tag me and Tim. If you're on Twitter, K magic one one and darkest four two nine. Um, and let us know. Cause I'd be curious if that theory could hold true that we've seen her. We just didn't know it was her. And yeah. now that we've confirmed she was indeed an inquisitor, which inquisitor, which, has been floating around for years. Everyone assumed mm-hmm. that she became one. Yep. Um, this just confirms it. And, and again, it's one of those things too, Tim, where you wonder, it's like, did the fandom push and get this uh, yes, that to could happen? Be. Or was this the plan all along? Which is fun. I like that. I'm going to go with both. I'm going to be like, it's probably cool. like one of those things where like, I wish we could do this, but I don't know if we have the time. And then the fandom's like, we really want this. And I'm like, I guess we'll have to make time for this. Exactly. Exactly. So Tales of the Empire, uh, May 4th? May the 4th. May 4th. So literally we finish. I'm going to see what day of the week that is. We finished Mandalorian. No, we finished Bad Batch. Bad Batch on the first. Yes, oh, we finished right Bad Batch. Into, and then sick. Saturday is Tales of the Empire. So on the 8th, Tim and I will talk about Are we Tales getting the all of the episodes? Or is they it all be... drop at once because they're all shorts. They're like yeah. 10 minutes each. Sick. So it's probably an hour's worth of content. Excellent. And then uh, three weeks of guests. And then Acolyte is the, the June fantastic now let us know when skeleton crew comes out okay thanks uh gonna like that youtube video of tales of the empire and move on outlaws let's talk about a brand new star wars video game tim and i have been very excited about this game the idea of an open world star wars game uh has been exciting since we had kotor 2 that was i believe the last open world star wars game uh, you could sit. You could make an argument for Swotor, but Swotor by classification is more of an MMORPG than it is an open world Star Wars game. I would even yeah. push back on you using the word open world in Swotor, but that's a conversation for another day. Yeah. Uh, let's focus on Outlaws. So yep. we get a peek behind the curtain. The most exciting thing, and the first thing I noticed was Kira. Yeah. Is in the first two seconds of the trailer. Yeah. I'm very, very excited. I wonder what that means. Um, just like overall, I wonder if she's going to make any any nods to Darth 
to to Maul. I wonder if Darth Maul is going to be like come up Her at boss. all. I know he's already dead at that point. He's already he's already gone. Um, but it would be interesting to see like if she brings him up at all. Uh, I would love to know what she's doing because the last time we saw her was Solo, and that happens before Episode One or sorry yep. Episode. No, I was right. Yeah, Episode One. Right. For Maul. Four. Episode four. There we go. Happens before Maul's four. death. You're talking about? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to figure out like so like where where Solo was. Solo's before four. Right before episode four. Um, so it's right before four, right before Andor, right before all of that. So like that's kind of like the time frame we're in. Um, we know we know with Outlaws we got a nod to the timeline of where they are right now. So it's Han Solo, Frozen, and Carbonite. So it's after yep. episode five and is before episode six. Yep. Uh, we go to Jabba's palace. We see Han Solo and Carbonate. It seems like she might know him too, which isn't a crazy thought. And, you know, you, you would assume that all of like, you know, these these types of uh, I get cute case you can call them like pirates or outlaws uh, would kind of know each other. They kind of all like bump shoulders. I'm sure with all of their cargo runs well, and whatnot. There's five major crime families. Um, yes. So Crimson Dawn. Uh, we see the Pikes. And we see the huts in this. The two that are missing, uh, let me scroll down, and make sure I say everything correctly so I don't have to be corrected, are Black Sun and Crimora. Those are the two that we don't see in the trailer. Yeah, and Black Sun we get a nod to in Aftermath. Yeah, they Black talk about Sun, Black Sun a bit. In the article, this comes from uh, MSN. Uh, Black Sun was very active around this time, as shown in the non-canon Shadows of the Empire multimedia event of the 90s, and was reestablished in Disney's new canon during the fifth season of Star Wars Clone Wars in 2012. With how established Black Sun was, its omission suggests that the syndicate may be, da- be being downplayed in the promotional material for a larger role in Kay's story, especially with Sliro, who's that lead bounty hunter he, guy in the room. And he's leading a new. Is that that's another crime family, right? Apparently, it's a new and emerging crime syndicate that yeah. he's in charge of. I think the name is somewhere in this article. They mention they mention him at the beginning. Um, like he, they even say because he's like Ashiga you, is you the new off, clan. They're like you pissed off Sliro. <laughs> Ashiga is the name of his Ashiga. new clan. Okay. Um. So, uh, yeah, it, it's going to be an interesting time, interesting story. I love Kay's demeanor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, she's very Han Solo esque. With very the, much so, her and Nyx, very very fun. I love this little sidekick pet that you get that goes and grabs your blaster. We saw that during the gameplay reveal. That goes mm-hmm. out and grabs blasters for her and does like fun little things. Uh, it'll be very very interesting. I also ND five. I would love to see more of. I want to know more. I know we got to see him in the the gameplay trailer, uh, but I would love to learn more about our uh, our battle droid friend. Mm-hmm. And see how he's gonna play out. Uh, we got to see a lot of really cool game. Like I mean, like they made they showed off some gameplay. We got to see like the dog fighting. Um, you know, you being in your ship. I love the speeder bike. It's not just a speeder bike. It's also gonna be like a jet ski, so you can go across water, which I thought was really really neat. So we got to look at some planets as well. Uh, so that that one aquatic looking planet that she was on, that she's like jet skiing across. That would look really really neat. Did you notice when Kay was approaching Jabba and she made the funny line about how she's surrounded and Jabba yeah. didn't give two craps? Did you see where she ended up standing at the yeah, end well, of that she, clip? Yeah, she was right over the Rancor pit. And I thought uh-huh. that was fantastic. And she, she was like, oh, I guess we're not doing that. <laughs> like, I, I like I like the comedy in this. There's definitely a lot of just like fun, funny moments. Like when she's in the cockpit for the ship and she yep. had to lift it up to sit up higher so she could see over the top. I thought that was great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and that's if you're gonna go this route with Star Wars, it's great to get into the mysticism and the Force and all that stuff. But when you get into the bounty hunting and the criminal underworld, you need that Han Solo esque and Lando esque humor. Uh, she even has one of the pre order outfits. Um, she looks like Lando. Uh, mm-hmm. She's got like the blue and the cape and everything. So um, the story looks interesting. I'm very excited to play through the story. The idea of an open world Star Wars. I will give my few little critiques. Number one, it definitely looks like an Ubisoft Assassin's Creed-esque style animated game. It's not the pinnacle of animation in gaming. But but most open world experiences are not because they have to make the game so massive. Yeah. That you can't it's it's like you uh, can't have everything in one. Go I ahead. will say that the PC version um and Nvidia posted pictures after the trailer was released and it mm-hmm. looks a lot better than it did in the trailer i'm okay. curious to see if if it was cat like I, I don't know who their console partner is it might be playstation is it xbox i don't remember it's somebody i think um, it's playstation okay so it might have been captured on console 
because the, the the Nvidia graphics looked a lot better. I noticed a lot of like like rough edges and things like that, and I was like, oh, I don't know, this looks kind of rough. And then I went and looked at the Nvidia pictures, I was like, that looks really good. So um, that could be, you know, that could definitely be. They might have obligations to their console partner uh, to be like, okay, we have to capture. They they they'd say it was all in engine, and so it looked really interesting. Um, one of the other things that we 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 that you see at the end of the trailer, which I thought was really cool, is we get to see a crate dragon, uh, yep. which was awesome. Uh, yep. I think that's gonna be really neat that we get to see a crate, and hopefully, I mean, I'm assuming it's gonna be close to scale to what we saw in Mando because it's definitely bigger than what we had in Kotor, um, which I'm excited to see. And then we have, then we have a Sarlacc pit in at some point that we have to. <laughs> we there have was to a fight shot through. where she looks like she's running into the mouth of a, either a dead Sarlacc or something. Yeah, it wasn't it she like, like sli- cave, was it, was she like sliding seat. down? Yeah, it's definitely like yeah. There's a that's the Sarlacc pit that looks terrifying. Yeah, so if you're Good running into a Sarlacc pit, God knows what's chasing you. Yep. Um, the other critique I have is the pricing model. I'm, yeah, I, I yeah, I that was the biggest thing that a lot of that I saw on the internet. That was the biggest buzz was the hundred and thirty dollars. So that's egregious. So the standard edition is 70. Look, games are going to cost 70 now. I will defend game development in this aspect. I'm not defending C-suite bonuses and all that stuff, but I will yeah. defend the fact that games have cost the same for 20 years and they needed a little bit of a price bump to cover costs. Where that money should go is a completely different podcast episode. We're not talking about that today. But the price of a game being $70 at base in 2024 Unfortunately, I'm not opposed to that just because of the way, you know, gaming has worked and games were 50, 60 dollars for 20 something years, if not longer. So 70 is base. OK, now here's where you'll lose me because I think ten dollar increments. It should is what it should be. Um, <clears throat> the gold edition is one hundred and ten dollars from 70. That's a two lot. post launch pieces of downloadable content that expand the story. I'm very I'm not happy with the fact that the story isn't in the game in a story game. Yeah. Um, I feel like we've learned from Baldur's Gate. I feel like we've learned from God of War. Even when God of War had more content, they were like, you can have it, you know, for yep. free. Here it is. Um, so I don't like the idea. This is a very Ubisoft move yep. um, to to do this and, and put two elements of the story behind a paywall instead of just adding them to the game. Even if they weren't done, the timetable wasn't there, all that stuff, whatever. Um, you do get two skins for Kay and Nyx with that price, but skins to me don't justify that cost shit. at all. You're talking to the guy that, like, I bought the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle skins in Fortnite, and the ones I bought before that were the Spider-Man ones, so that's off- how often I buy skins in Fortnite, and that's a free game. Um, then it jumps to 130 bucks. Now, you do get two more cosmetic pieces, still not worth it. You get a cosmetic for your speeder and the trailblazer, which I'm assuming is your ship. Um, still not worth it. Um, it does come with a digital art book featuring the concept art and cinematic storyboards. It develops. I don't give a shit. If you're putting that in there for collectors, the the gold edition should be um, $79.99 in my opinion. And then this ultimate edition, you could justify $99.99 because the collectors will want the book. I understand the book is a physical item, ship, all that stuff. I get that. That would be the pricing model. This gold edition and this ultimate edition is too much money, in my opinion. It's not, it does not justify the cost at all. If it was something that I could put up on my shelf, like if it was like a physical, like collector's item, I love like a helmet. I don't give a shit about a book. Like, I don't need a coffee table piece. Like, I've got my Star Wars books, I've got my little Star Wars library collection going on, but like, yeah, $130 for. Uh, not a lot like in-game items that I don't really care about. Like I'm going to unlock stuff throughout the game. There's going to be cosmetics. There's not like other like cool cosmetics in the game. The only cool cosmetics you get is from, um, from buying the premium or super awesome edition. Like that's kind of, that could, uh, ugh, ugh. it just, I, I don't know what else to say other than, ugh. it just, that's it, like you said, it's a very Ubisoft move, unfortunately. Um, so I will probably end up just like I'm going to have to buy the, the the extra edition so that I get the pieces of content because right. I want to know the story. Like I, I want to be able to, you know, not only stream it and make content around it, but I want to know. I want to know what's in there because this is all going to be canon. This is all canonical. And that's why I'm taking my creator hat off because like for me, this is like, OK, I have to hunt, spend one hundred ten dollars. It's a business expense and put it aside. And that's the end of it for me and you. We don't care because we can write it off. Yeah. And for the average gamer. 
this is not fair in my no, opinion. No, it's not fair at all. And so I I really hope they, they reassess after seeing the negative backlash that they got yesterday. And I assume that we'll continue to get uh, for the next couple of months until we get to release. But I don't I really don't know how much how much budge they're gonna they're gonna you give. You could you could do Ubisoft Plus Premium for seventeen ninety nine a month and beat the game in two months and you'd still be ahead of the game financially if as long as you cancel it, obviously. So that do is Do you think an that's option. what they're trying to do? Is they're trying to they're gonna scare people with the price and then be like, here is the cheaper option and they get I you hooked on the subscription that. model? Here's why. I don't care about the book like you. If it was a helmet or something, I'd be tempted. Mm -hmm. I don't care about the book. Yep. You get everything in the ultimate edition. So you get all the skins and whatnot. I did this with Valhalla, Tim. Uh huh. Instead of buying Valhalla, I just subscribed. And remember, I played it for like a month. Yeah. And then I stopped for like six months and then yeah. I went back to it. Uh -huh. So I subscribed the first month, turned it off uh -huh. when I stopped playing it. And then like six months later, I subscribed for two months. So. And this was when it was fourteen ninety nine, I believe. Yeah. So I essentially paid forty five dollars for Valhalla and got all of the skins and all of the DLC and all of the content. So I might do this again. That might be. And the, I the think that might it. be the strategy is to push them towards, you know, the, the their ecosystem because I think it's it makes twofold. sense. The grimy reason is because people forget to cancel. Yeah. Um, the non grimy reason is is data collection and and whatnot that they want from, you know you and to be able to sell you more in the future uh i did that with far cry too i bought a month of the ubisoft plus premium i downloaded far cry 6 i didn't really like it canceled it and stopped playing far cry 6. the more that we talk about this the more i feel like they gave an uh an, an outrageous sticker price to give people shock to then give them a cheaper option to then loop them into the ecosystem that makes a lot of sense and that's yeah. that's really like scary marketing not gonna lie Oh yeah, no, it's it's genius like it. from the person that that brainchild it from a marketing perspective. But I don't like the scummy um, kind of like the bun. It's like the bungee approach. You know, they're like you could buy this collector thing if you don't want to do it in game for two hundred fifty thousand dollars, or you could go sit in our game and grind it out, and then you get the code to then buy it for cheap. Like it works. It does work. People want the thing, so they'll work hard. They'll go do the other thing to get it. We've said it a million times. The most popular game in the world right now is free. And it makes the most money. Process mm -hmm. that. Do with that information what you will. Um, but uh, or all of that aside, go forty dollars. I am excited to play this through this story. Um, Same. I think it's going to be a fun story. I think it's going to be a fun ride. Um, I'm hoping that as long as this game is successful and doesn't have issues, it sets a precedent that more open world Star Wars games can be successful. Single and you know me, I'm a huge supporter of single player and co-op experiences. So I'm all about this moving that needle um, to, to make way for more. You know, when, when we talk about games and the impact they have on us personally, yes, Fortnite was a time and a place in gaming, but that you as a creator and folks creating community around Fortnite mm -hmm. was what made it popular. Helldivers right now, it's so popular because people are creating community around it and literally telling a story that the devs are like, sure, we'll go with your story. It's more fun than the one we wrote mm -hmm. uh, and perpetuating it. And that's awesome. And I know that's not going to happen with a single player game, but your memories of playing games. Always you remember these single player experiences you talk about all the time um, that you talk about crying at the end of Death Stranding. Oh, I talk about how emotional God of War made me. I talk about crying at the end of Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, so it's stories like that that kind of leave a mark on you. Yep. And although this game looks like a lot of fun, I do hope it has the emotional connection at some point in the story to, you know, really make it a memorable experience. So yep. we'll find out soon enough. Uh, mm -hmm. August 30th, the day before my wife's birthday. Thanks, Ubisoft. That means I can't play day two. Well, actually, if I do subscribe, I can play three days early. So that's in the gold and ultimate edition as well. Oh, shit. Yep. That. So uh, I guarantee you. <laughs> There's Tim so and I, many catches. Why don't you just go? You have to subscribe. You just like, I might as well just subscribe to Ubisoft for a month. Do it and wrap it up in two months. That's my yep. recommendation. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
but that's going to do it for today. Tim and I need to hit the road. We have we... to announce the release date, though. You said August 30th, right? August 30th. Okay. August 30th. All I, I heard is that. it's before my wife's birthday. And I was like, wait a second. I don't know if people no. know when your wife's birthday is. <laughs> my wife's birthday is the 31st, for those that couldn't <laughs> figure that out. August 30th is the release date for Star Wars Outlaws. May 4th is the release date for Tales of the Empire. And we have four, count them, four more episodes of Bad Batch, the final season. Uh, and Acolytes June 5th, if we're still. God. Oh, what a great time to be a Star Wars fan. There's just so well, much Well, we did Star go Wars. through just like three months of not so great it time to be a Star rough. Wars fan. Well, let me rephrase. Not being a Star Wars fan. Being a Star Wars fan is great. We went through a period where having a Star Wars podcast was difficult. Yeah, it was That's some drought. But it. now we're good. We're yeah. <laughs> feeling We're good. set for a while. And I am going, I will report back to Nick next week. I know Tim's experienced oh, yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I am going to, uh, I'm taking my kids to Disney. It's my daughter's fifth birthday. Uh, this week, so I will be uh, taking off work. But f- Saturday, I'm I'm gonna go to Ogus Cantina. I got a reservation, so it'll be my Can't first wait to time hear there. your review. I think I'm gonna get a fuzzy tauntaun for a drink. It's so this. you should get that one, and then also the um, what was the, what was the other one that I got? The Ewok one, the one from uh, uh, Endor. God, there's a couple of them. They're really good. Like honestly, Danielle I, and I are gonna get different drinks so we can try each other's, and then Audrey's gonna. There's also get collectors' two cups. So okay. you, I got the I showed you the tiki cup that I got yep. that was the the Ewok one. They also have a flight. So if you're gonna do beer, but it's a Rancor tooth flight, which is awesome, and you get to keep it, and it's like four five different like little Rancor teeth that you can drink out of. It's totally worth it. All right, cool. All right, well, I'll go. let you all know what I think of Ogus Cantina next week. But Tim and I are out of here for this episode of Star Wars and Scotch. We thank you so much for listening and hanging out. Please rate, review, subscribe. We are Star Wars Scotch everywhere on the internet. Tim is Darkness429 everywhere on the internet, and he streams uh, most days of the week on Twitch, YouTube. Uh, Those are the two main places where you can go check them out. Uh, And I'm KMagic101. I stream twice a week, uh, Wednesdays, Fridays. Uh, Not this week because I'm off. Uh, But uh, you can check me out on Twitch, YouTube. Uh, or live space. Tim loves mentioning that I'm on live space. space. I mean, like live you got space. to, dude. I mean, it's like a, it's up and coming. I think live space could do pretty well. Is it it? We'll see. But we'll see. please and thank you as always, Tim. Take us out. May the force be with you, friends. Always. <laughs>